I'm Kelly and I own the Dog Lady. We do local dog trips and beach trips in St Helens and at Formby Beach. And uh, Paul Fit has joined us today on a, a beach trip. When my little girl was born, made me reassess everything. And I just didn't really want to go and work a lot of hours in an office and, and not see her really very much. So with the dog walking, I'm quite fortunate. I can work it around the kids and work a bit more flexibly, I guess, and be outside in the fresh air as well. So technically, no, you don't need any qualifications, but I would say they definitely help if you're looking for a dog walker. It's not regulated at all, which I think it should be. For my staff, I want a first aid qualified. We want clean DBS, obviously a lot of experience. So the ladies that I've got that work for me, one of them used to be a veterinary nurse and the other lady, she's actually a trustee for a dog rescue. So a lot of experience with dogs, just simply having had a pet dog for a few years isn't you know, enough experience really. It's, it's different types of dogs different types of experiences. It's handy for people that are at work a lot. We've got a lot of people that work from home. It's just different types of walks, different stimulation. We, we try to do walks whereby the dog's mind as well as their body is uh, stimulated. So it's not just exercise, it's canine enrichment, really. We go on adventures where sniffs are everywhere and it's they have friends, they have dog friends, as opposed to going out on their own with a dog owner. We match all the dogs quite specifically with other dogs to make sure that they get the maximum enjoyment out of it. A lot of the time, obviously, you would you would Google. A good dog walker will have either a website or a Facebook page or Instagram page. Facebook's usually a good place because obviously you can see people that you might know that might like the page or use them. Word of mouth as well as a lot of people know someone they could recommend to them. Always make sure you ask lots of questions and don't be put off by a dog walker sort of interviewing you. We probably ask so many questions, people are sometimes a bit put off by it, but it's it's most important that we find a dog that fits us as well as though them finding one that fits them. We don't just walk the dog, it's it's more important than that. Um, and we wouldn't just take on a dog that would affect the, the dog dynamics that we've already got. Find out the routines, find out how the dog's transported, um, do they have any sort of first aid qualifications, and um, what would happen if there was an accident. Also asking about how they transport keys, because obviously people are, have got keys to people's houses, so it's important that they know how those keys are stored. I've, I've seen dog walkers before with nine dogs on their own. Personally, I, I, I couldn't keep my eye on nine different dogs running around, you know, no matter how well behaved they are. If there was a disagreement, you obviously need to be able to be there to, to split that up and to look after the dogs. I tend to walk three, three to four. Most people's insurances um, would only cover them up to six anyway. A lot of dog walkers will always say that your own insurance covers it, but um, a lot of own insurance won't cover it unless they're in charge of the dog. Um, if something happens whilst they're, they're in our care, it's important that we can cover the cost of that. A general level of obedience, we can't walk a dog that will not walk on a on a lead or a harness, you know, is aggressive. But there are people that specialise in solo dogs and um, and certainly dogs with certain issues, um, reactive issues, that the, there will be people that specify that they, they do that kind of dog walking. So if, if they have a dog that is reactive, then they need to look for someone who can do one-to-one -one care for that dog. We do have puppies, we just wouldn't really walk them on the groups until they're a certain age so that their little legs really can keep up. P puppies shouldn't be walked for too long, so we, we don't tend to put them in groups until they're at least six months, depending on the size of the dog. A lot of dog walkers will also do puppy visits where they could do them, say, twice a day, you know, for a food, toilet break, um, a little bit of a play. Dog walkers, not ideal for, for just once a day when they're such a young puppy. Obviously, they need to be not aggressive towards other dogs, but we do have quite a lot of dogs that were shy around other dogs prior, and they're not now. Um, we'd maybe just put them with the dogs that kind of do their own thing, um, and it gives them the confidence to come out of their shell a little bit. Um, it's just, again, around matching dogs in the right group. I tend to do a free consultation, so we'll go and meet the dog. And quite quickly, um, I think, I, just, I guess it's time doing this now. I can understand quite quickly which dogs that they're going to get on well, sometimes based on their age, their temperament, whether they're 
been neutered or not, which obviously asking lots of questions with the owners as well and finding out what kind of dogs they like to meet. We go to the house, pick the dog up, put them in the car in a secure area. Then we'll go and pick another dog up, take them to a fun location, usually somewhere where there's not many people about. We'll do our walk. If they're obviously good off lead and we've built up that trust, they'll be off lead or they could potentially be on a long line. Once we've done our walk, we'll give them a quick clean up, a quick check over, a, a drink of water. Back in the car, spray them with some nice puppy spray generally so they go home smelling of uh, baby powder and then we'll take them back home and follow whatever process the owner likes so for example they might want them to be put in their crate and given their food or whatever we are advised we will uh, follow their drop-off process.